the internet is broken. Don't worry, you can still connect to the internet, browse around, send email. All the technical aspects work just fine. It's what us as users have to give up in order to access the internet. That's the problem. Popular websites have proven that they will treat profit over protecting your privacy as they're ready to sell your data to the highest bidder without even thinking twice. The honest truth is that we've just become accustomed to the suckiness because we don't know that there's a better option. That we haven't really unlocked the true potential of what the internet could be. However, a new internet is being formed and it's being built around the principle of decentralization. In order to better understand exactly what decentralization is and how it can benefit us, let's look at the issues with the current status quo of the internet. Centralized networks can be defined as networks where communications, information, and data must enter into and leave through a central hub. That central hub is often in the form of private servers. This framework has led to a technically efficient internet, but it's also one that is always dependent on users sacrificing their privacy and personal information. If you want to access social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter, well, you're signing an agreement that essentially allows them to sell your information to third parties as well as use your content. But it's not just the internet that has centralized entities. They're everywhere. Governments, banks, and internet service providers have all shown that they will do anything to stay in control of your information. They don't want to lose an asset that they have had for so long. What does centralization do? Well, all these entities controlling information leads to a lack of power for the individual or consumer. Information that we give up to these centralized powers often ends up getting sold or is compromised by hacks, which can lead to the very severe problem of identity theft. Call for increased tangible decentralization did not really gain any steam until after the 2008 financial crisis, when a person or persons under the pseudonym of Satoshi Nakamoto published a white paper that first introduced blockchain technology. That also encompasses the principle of decentralization. That's what blockchain is built upon. A decentralized network differs greatly from a centralized one because instead of one server, one party being in charge of all that data, all that information, decentralized networks operate on a peer-to-peer -peer basis where the user's computers communicate and interact directly without the use of an intermediary. By operating on a peer-to-peer -peer basis, personal information is not shared as a third party never has access to that information because you're just working from point A to point B. Just simply isn't needed. It essentially cuts out the middleman by letting you bypass their involvement because you're working directly with another user. The benefits of decentralization are numerous. It allows you significantly more privacy and allows you to maintain your identity and reputation without worrying what the third party is going to do with it. Cutting out the middleman also saves the producer and consumer money. And the most important thing that decentralization can provide is freedom. The freedom to use an internet without the caveat having to give up your personal information that could fall into the wrong hands. Now it's important to understand that the internet has a long way to go before it becomes completely decentralized, but it's undeniable that this trend is already starting. And that's our video on the principle of decentralization. It's a new concept. Any questions or comments, throw those down below in the comments section. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let us know by smashing that like button and also hit that subscribe button to get notified of any of our future content. Also, be sure to check out blockchain.wtf for all your blockchain and cryptocurrency information needs. This has been Jeremy from Blockchain WTF. I'll see you next time.